that's what he brought me Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Oh, the sun sets free Oh, it's free Uh, she is kind of heading that up for us, 
and then we'll get you her information if you need that. Uh, but that way you can uh, know all that's going on. Uh, also notice our stewardship committee is uh, we're going to be meeting that is next Sunday at 4.30 in the afternoon and we're meeting in the fellowship hall. Uh, the stewardship committee, uh, again, we, we're just kind of rolling over from last year. Uh, so that will be Joe Van Falsen, Shelton Lattimore, Janice Bonnet, Kim Cook, Roger Brandt, and Kat Sanders. Uh, so if you can meet with me next Sunday afternoon at 4.30, that will be over in the fellowship hall. And I'm going to ask just our church family to be in prayer for our stewardship committee as we begin working towards uh, the budget for uh, 2021. Uh, we're going to have to make some decisions on how we're going to budget for uh, our ministries of church. And uh, one thing that, that we know for sure right now is nothing is sure, right? Uh, things are changing constantly. Uh, so we're trying to plan ahead uh, for our ministries for next year. So y'all please be in prayer uh, for our stewardship committee as they begin their work uh, next week. Uh, we do have your uh, list of prayer concerns there in your bulletin. Uh, we'll slip a paper there if you would like uh, for us to be in prayer for you over anything. We encourage you just to write that down on this little brown slip of paper. Fold it over, drop it. Uh, in the offering plate this morning as you are leaving. Uh, we do have offering plates at the front door here and also at the side door. And you can uh, drop off your tithes and your offerings there and also your uh, list of prayer concerns. Okay. With that in mind, let's go to the prayers we prepare our hearts for worship today. Our precious Father, it's so good to be in your house again this morning. I'm so thankful for this opportunity that you give us each week to gather together as a, as a family and just be able to lift up the name of Jesus our Savior. I thank you, Lord, for how you are continuing to work through this particular time in our lives, Father, as, as individuals but also as our church, Father. You continue to guide us each day, Lord, taking us step by step through all of these things that are happening around us. And Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory for that today. Father, I'm so thankful for our choir this morning that's going to be leading us in just a moment. Father, it's so good to be able to see them up here again leading in worship. Thank you for the chance that we have at Sunday school now, and we're trying to bring that back. Father, you are just continually faithful to us, Lord. And Lord, as I've been reading in the Psalms all week long, Father, I can't help but just say that same prayer of David, Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, Lord. You are so worthy of it, Lord. I pray that you would be glorified and honored in everything we do today, Lord. Let the name of Jesus be uplifted. I pray that, Father, you would inhabit the praises of your people. And that, Father, your word would go forward, Lord, into this community. Across this nation and around the world, that Father, your Son Jesus Christ is uplifted in every way. Thank you for letting us be a part of this. And thank you for letting us be a part of what you're doing, Lord. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you.
Good morning, y'all. How y'all doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning, Josh. Please stand with the rest of us. As we say, God, you're so good.
Josh. Well, good morning to everybody, uh, the church family that's here. Boy, it's good to see your smiling faces. And I tell you what, I've missed these folks. Let me tell you what. But glad that they're here uh, so that you can see them and hear them. Uh, we, we just started embarking on another choir video project. So in about three weeks or so, hopefully we'll be able to present that to you too. Um, since you're standing at home, please stand. We're going to sing uh, our only hymn <laughs> today. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Deeper 
or of the darkness, so that let us not sleep as others do. But let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with Him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we have read your word this morning, Father, even just reading it, Father, Lord, it's already pricking my heart, Lord. It's convicting me, Lord. I pray, that, Father, we would hear your words this morning speak into every life. I pray that you would draw us closer to you through your word, and I pray, Father, most importantly, that as we finish this message today, I pray that we are all fully aware and we are all fully prepared for the day of the Lord. And I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you so much. You can see. We started looking at this last week and we focused on those two words, times uh, and, and seasons. Uh, we said that there is a day. There is a specific day. That there is a, a specific hour. And that there is a specific place that our Savior, Jesus Christ, is going to return to this earth and is going to establish the kingdom of God right here on earth. And preceding that day, there's going to be a season of time. A season of what Jesus describes as a tribulation like the world has never seen before. But we look at the world around us today and we see how... Society seems to just be kind of imploding and crumbling in on itself. It would say, can things get any worse than this? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's going to be a time of tribulation like the world has never experienced before. And Paul begins to talk a little bit about that in this chapter. He talks specifically about the day of the Lord. The day when Christ returns and sets up God's kingdom right here on earth. So I want to take a few minutes this morning and look at, at the day of the Lord and what Paul describes and how he discusses that with us. But you notice here, first of all, uh, that, that Paul says, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come, in case there's any kind of question about it, Paul says the day of the Lord will come, and he says it will come like a thief in the night. How many of you have ever had your buildings broke into or maybe your house broke into? It didn't happen during the day. Uh, most of the time when, when things like that happen, it happens at night when people are, are unexpecting it. It's not something that they were looking to happen. And that's what Paul was getting at here in this description of a thief in the night. That it, it, the day of the Lord will come, the day that, that Jesus returns to this earth is going to come so unexpected upon those who are still alive and who remain here on this earth. As a matter of fact, the Bible does a good job of, of using that same phrase throughout as it talks about the day of the Lord. A thief in the night. If we were to look in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it talks about the day of the Lord coming like a thief in the night. Jesus even uses the same phrase in Revelation chapter uh, 16, verse 15. He says, Behold, I'm coming like a thief in the night. The book of Matthew, in chapter 24, verses 42 through 44, Jesus talks about, says, If the, the, the master of the house uh, had not been ex expecting the thief to come, and the night said, he said, If he had been prepared, if he was had any kind of warning about it, he would have stayed up and waited. All of that referring to the time when Jesus comes back. For those who are still here on the earth, a day that is completely, totally unexpected. A thief in the night. Paul goes on, he says it's going to be a, a day uh, with something else happening so suddenly, without notice, 
But without warning, it's just going to happen as Jesus steps out of the clouds with, with the saints of glory and returns back to this earth. So it's going to happen so suddenly, without notice, without warning. It says it's going to catch people off guard. It's the last thing they thought would have happened. As a matter of fact, so many people believe it will never happen. But suddenly, Jesus returns. Jesus shares with us uh, the parable uh, in Matthew chapter 24. Uh, excuse me, that's, uh, I'm thinking about the parable of the, uh, of the ten virgins. That's in Matthew chapter 25. Parable of the ten virgins, as Jesus relates this to his return, says that the, the groom goes off and, and he's preparing a place for his bride. And they are waiting for Him. Not quite sure when He's coming back. But the promise is that He's preparing a place and that He is returning. And so they are to wait, ready, dressed to go. Because at any time, the, the groom could return. And there the, the, the ten virgins are, five of them with their lamps filled with oil, ready, watching, and waiting waiting for their love to come. And there are those five who are not ready. They have their oil in their lamps. They run off to go get some oil and at an hour they weren't expecting, the broom returns and takes those who were prepared. I love that Paul says for us who are in Christ, he says we are fully aware. We're expecting this to come. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus talks about the day of His return, that season of time. He says that, For as in the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving and marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Without notice. As everybody continues on with their daily lives, thinking everything's alright. As a matter of fact, Paul says here, says that people are going to be crying out, oh, everything's good, everything's safe, you don't have anything to be afraid of. All that nonsense about Jesus, who cares? It says, then suddenly, Jesus comes. And with Him comes God's judgment. God's judgment on all people and all nations. And just like the flood, it sweeps over them. Not only is it going to be suddenly or like a thief of the night, but Paul describes it as sudden destruction comes. Folks, people's lives are going to be changed in an instant forever. It's not going to be a day that people are looking forward to. As I shared with you last week, it really depends on which perspective you're looking at this thing from. Are we looking forward to that day? Or is it a day of dread? Is it a day that we don't want to acknowledge because suddenly destruction comes and things will never be the same. Paul says it's like labor pains. Ladies, can you kind of feel what Paul's getting at there? It's like labor pains. It's not pleasant. It's not something that you're looking forward to with, with great anticipation. How many of you ladies, as you were you know, expecting that child, you, know, you just couldn't wait to go into labor? All of you are so excited about going into labor and experiencing all that pain and all that, 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 that hurt and everything like that. But there was something great that came at the end, right? Something fantastic. Paul says the day of the Lord is going to be like labor pains. He says it's not going to be pleasant for those that are still here. It's not going to be a day of cheering and rallying around. Instead, it'll be a day of crying and tears. But, 
Just like in labor pains, as that child is born, something wonderful takes place. Through these labor pains, through all those tears, something fantastic happens at the end. As Christ steps back on this earth, in the kingdom of God, which He has promised for so long, the kingdom of God is now on earth. Folks, that's something for us to get excited about. That's something that we can truly praise God for this morning. And as horrible as this time is going to be for those who remain here on the earth, those who have, have refused to place their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ, look at what Paul says there in the next verses, in verse 4 or 5. He starts out saying the word, but... A little word, but man, it's got a whole lot of meaning there. He's talking about all this horrible stuff that's going to take place. But for those of us who are children of light, who are children of the day, it's a day of great anticipation. It's a day that we were fully aware that was going to take place. We've listened to God's warning over the years through His words. We've listened to the preachers preach for years. We've listened to the Sunday school teachers as they sounded out the warning for years. And we have placed our faith and all of our hope in Christ our Savior. And so we look forward gladly to that day as once again Jesus fulfills His promises to His people. We are children of the day. And we don't have anything to be afraid of. We don't have to live in fear, folks. We look forward with great hope and expectation to Jesus' return. Are you looking for Him this morning? We are children of the day. Children of the light. And so Paul tells us in verse 8, we need to live like children of the light. We need to live differently than everybody else does. Notice what he says in this passage. He says, we're not of the night or of the darkness, so let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake. Folks, we need to wake up. We need to wake up and know that Christ is coming soon. And we need to be sounding that warning off to people, letting them know that the day is approaching fast. Whenever Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane with Peter and James and John, what was the two things he asked them to do? He said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Stay awake. Folks, we've been gotten lazy sometimes. The church has gotten lazy too frequently. And we're going to sleep and we're not sounding the warning off anymore. People need to be aware the day is coming soon. God's been warning us about it. He's using us to say on the alarm now. Stay awake. Don't go to sleep. He says, stay sober. Be sober. No, as a matter of fact, he used that phrase twice. Be sober. I think we need to be reminded. That's why I said it twice. What does that be sober mean? It means be on guard, be on alert, stay ready, stay prepared, be, be looking around, be aware of what's going on around you. Because the days are going to come just like that. So suddenly, he says, stay awake, be sober. Then he tells us that we've got to put on some stuff. That's how children of the light live. They stay awake, they're sober, they're ready, and they're dressed right. Notice what he tells us to put on here. He says, put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. You know, see what, that, what we're doing here? Every day, every day, church, we're going to be putting on this breastplate of love, and faith in a helmet of salvation. What does that do? It guards our 
hearts and our minds, right? Guarding our hearts and our minds. Why? Because that's where Satan attacks. That's where Satan was attacking these believers here in Thessalonica. They were so worried and upset, thinking that their loved ones had already missed Jesus' return. They were afraid that they had missed Jesus' return. There were false teachers that had already said, Hey guys, your faith is in vain. Jesus has already come back. You missed it. And they were so upset and terrified. We read that morning in 2 Thessalonians as to how Paul had to address that. The devil loves to attack our minds. We put on the helmet of salvation, guarding our minds, knowing I am aware, I am prepared, I am a child of God. And Satan can't win. We guard our hearts as Satan tries to fire those, those fiery darts at us. We're guarded through our faith and our love. Folks, this, this is the hope that we have in Christ. This is His promise to us. We're fully aware of it. That day cannot catch us off guard like a thief in the night because we've been warned and we've heard the warnings and we've responded. Notice here, I love this particular verse. God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. As horrible as that day will be for those who are on this earth, you need to know this. That is not what God desires for you to have. God desires for all people to come to faith in Christ. He's not destined you for an eternity in hell. I can't stand it whenever people say that. That God chooses some people to save and some people to go to hell. No, He doesn't. This passage says that God has not destined us for that. But God gave us only to God's Son so that you could be saved, so that you could escape all of this condemnation and judgment. You don't have to face that. But you can have the hope and the expectation of dwelling forever with Christ. That's what God made possible for each and every one of us. God has not destined us for that, but to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, so whether I'm alive or whether I am gone on the glory of God, I am with Him on. I'm with Him now. He's with me. We walk together day by day. I'm a child of the light, a child of the day. Paul says encourage each other with this. Encourage one another. Build each other up with this. Don't we need some encouragement in the days that we're facing right now? As we look around us and we see all of the, the things that are taking place, all around the world we see so much unrest. In, in our own country, we're such a, a, a volatile environment right now. People are so angry and hostile all the time. We need some encouragement. The fact of the matter is this. God's promised us a day when Christ is going to return and set up that heavenly kingdom here on earth. And Jesus is going to deal with sin. He's going to deal with those who are sinners. And every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Are you ready for that day? Are you ready for it? Paul says you can be fully aware. Do you know about it? Will you receive it? I'm going to ask our musicians to come to us to play for just a minute. 
It's going to be an opportunity for you to respond. You don't have to come down front here to this altar. If you'd like to, man, I'd love to pray with you. But right where you're at, you can call out to the Lord. You know right now, social distancing and everything that we're doing now is the greeting time we used to use, always have, you know, where we could say hi to each other. I know you're still kind of doing it, but I'm going to ask you while, while we sort of sing this last song, which is I love you with the love of the Lord. Just look at your name and you don't have to go over and hug them, but just look at them and tell them you love them. It's important. Yes, I 